This channel is proudly sponsored by The Red Room Publishing. Please check out the link to their store in the description and in the pinned comment. For exclusive tabletop RPG products you will find nowhere else. Hi! Welcome to this part of my review featuring the Rift Breakers role-playing game. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review, featuring this solo, cooperative and even traditional tabletop RPG inspired by MMORPGs, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about the GMless rules and tools. These are the tools that you will employ to emulate a game master. You have your table to answer yes or no questions, that is, perhaps something is very unlikely, something could be likely, or perhaps almost certain. You also have a table to add complications to the situation. Maybe something that appears to be one way is actually another. Perhaps the physical environment changes, the weather, the floor collapses, a trap is triggered, etc. You also have action and theme tables. These two tables are the second key component when playing without a game master. They are used to inspire discoveries, events, character details or motivations and much more. In the case of actions you have things such as restore, avoid, share, surrender. In the case of theme you have things such as trial, danger, safety, travel, agent, leader. You also have tables to determine non-player character initial reactions and disposition. Perhaps the non-player character starts out unfriendly. Or maybe it starts out being helpful from the very beginning of the encounter. And what is the non-player character doing? Maybe the character is just frolicking or relaxing. Or perhaps that character is on patrol. When it comes to the initial encounter reaction, it can shift from attacking you to perhaps friendly to perhaps just leaving you alone. It depends on the context and of course on the actions of the player characters. You can also determine the age and the gender of the non-player character, the motivation. Perhaps that character looks for knowledge. You can also determine the age, the gender and the motivation for that character. Perhaps that character is seeking power. Perhaps that character is angry. You can also determine the description. Maybe the character looks skinny, perhaps elegant. You can also determine the demeanor. Perhaps that non-player character is dependable, or maybe sketchy. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part we are going to talk about gameplay procedures. All of these tables are quite handy, but there are plenty of other tables as well. To determine the enemies, the encounters, the layout of various adventure sites, these GMless tools are there to provide you with surprises when it comes to encounters, the places that you are exploring, what happens during and out of combat, but definitely frame things through roleplay. If you start asking questions all the time like, is the character robust, is there a way to enter the castle, etc., you're going to be pulled out from the immersive experience. Rather, I look for the entrance to gain access to the castle, or I look at the character's physical appearance. And so you make your roles on the tables while still feeling immersed within the fiction. Thank you for watching this part of the review. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment and subscribe. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. This has been Abraham El Jaguar, a professional game master. If you want me to run a game for you, please check out the pinned comment below. And remember, it is better to roleplay and fail in character than not to roleplay and fail as a player. Once again, thank you and see you later.